Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your review show. Change the graphic quickly. I'm your host, Khalil Maidin, and this is the show where we talk about everything that happened in the series between Pakistan and South Africa. We're going to be talking about the series as a well, whole, but particularly, obviously, the third ODI as well. The, the title of this video, obviously, being Did We See What We Wanted to See? Now, for me personally, I'm going to start off by giving you my thoughts on the game before we bring on our guests on the show. Generally speaking, I'm very happy with what I saw in this particular game from certain players. Now, we were looking for players to fill in the gaps in the South African team. I think Kyle Verena, Yanam and Milan are proving more and more so that they are the guys that need to be in this in their first 11 in, in this um, particular side. Yanam and Milan showing what he's capable of. Concerns, yes, still over the way he plays against spin, but I don't think there's many other openers in the country currently that can show that they can play spin any better. So if we're going to take anybody that's going to 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 open up the batting with Quentin de Kock and, and be destructive in the power play, because most teams that we play against will most likely open up with two seamers. The only concern is that when you play in India, most likely you're going to get someone opening up with spin bowlers. So that's the thing that you're going to have to rotate the strike very well. They're going to have to bat aggressively in a different way, running hard between the wickets, like Aditya said on previous streams, and do those type of things and look for ways to score runs. Now, I'm very happy with Carl Verena. I think that he can be that number five for South Africa. He showed once again, pressure is on, comes into the middle. Looked calm, looked collected, rotated the strike very well, ran between the wickets very well, found the boundary, could get the big shots away as well. Pakistan, though, bowled extremely well. Now, we must give props to them for doing that. Apart from maybe Hassan Ali towards the back end of his of his spells, um, he, he struggled a bit towards the towards the end. But other than that, holistically, they bowled pretty well. And I think that's they contained us very well, despite having guys with, with their eye in. I, can, I also have to mention Adile Pechelkwayo. Now, a lot of people have been hating on him and saying very nasty things about Adile, but he's, proving, he's proven it now that he can do it with a bat too. He can play in innings like he did today, measured, collected. Yes, there was one or two maybe that he miscued, but so was there some miscued so shots from some of the top guys as well in other games as well. So, I mean, Rassi was dropped in one of the matches before he went on to score a big score. So um, there are some times that things happen, you need a little bit of luck on your side, but I think that Andile showed that he can do that 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 batting role for South Africa as an all-rounder. Um, and I was just not so happy with the bowling today from South Africa, apart from Keshav Maharaj. Now, Keshav is another standout player for me that I think has proven it, because the reason why I say it is, he's coming to this ODI side now, in on a wicket that not, doesn't necessarily help the spinners and not only did he get wickets but he also bowled extremely economically well and and kept the pressure on pakistan when he when he bowled so i think if i'm going to pick out to this particular guys who stands out and who should actually put their hands forward and who steps forward as as one of the main guys within the side um that are that are up for selection for those extra spots for me it's going to have to be anaman calvarena and Andile, um, not Andile, sorry, and Keshav Maharaj. Those three players for me stood out today, and I think they deserve an op another opportunity to, to prove what they can do. Markram showed a bit with the ball. I think he's going to be one of those type of players that I feel are going to be um, utility guys in a way in the in the white ball cricket. I know that he has all the talent in the world. But it's unfortunate that he hasn't really shown it in one in white ball cricket. We know what he can do. We know that he's an incredible batsman. He just hasn't shown it. Um, once again, getting a good start, but then losing his wicket. And it's, it's not necessarily always good deliveries that take out Aiden. It's a majority of the time he's his own enemy and he ends up getting himself out. But he showed that he can bowl and, and he bowled really well today, bowling on a hell of a lot of overs and, and keeping it tight and getting some wickets. So Markram has also showed that he can add something a little bit extra with, uh, with a ball. I think that if he can get his runs up to scratch, I think the fact that he can bowl is going to put it in his favor. But in ODI cricket, we still have some time. Um, there's there's still some time for him to make that side in the 220 in the in the ODI side. It's the T20s next, and that's what we're going to be talking about again in 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 another um, episode. 
But before we get going, before I bring on the guest today, um, after my long ass intro, here's the subscribe button. Click that subscribe button. Click that notification bell for all future videos. Let's bring on our guests. We've got a teacher who went to the press conference with Mark Boucher, and we've got Umpo also on the stream. Welcome to the show, guys. You obviously, heard, you obviously heard everything I said, but let's start with uh, <laughs> let's start with Aditya. Um, Aditya, I want you to just give us some insight, your insight, and a little bit about Boucher and how that has made you think going forward. You just muted, bro. Yeah. Uh, right. So, so Boucher's presser is a bit uh, fresh in my head, so I'm just going to talk about that real quick. Uh, where he's, he essentially he said that uh, the team was good in patches, so that when the team was bad, they were really bad. And um, on occasions like today, when the last two overs, it cost them 40 runs, uh, that's problematic. If you cut that down to 25, you know, you, st you still have a chance at the game. So that was there. He, he, he put an emphasis on fielding and said that uh, that was something that the team needed to work on a lot more because that fielding has not been up to scratch in his view. And um, he also said that essentially now it's, it's time that senior players really put out some, some standout mm -hmm. performances and win them games because um, winning is a habit and uh, they really need that momentum. Mm -hmm. um, my, my view is that um, I think from a, from a fielding perspective, um, we won the toss and that was, an, that was an advantage for the team. Um, it was also incredible captaincy from, from Temba that uh, you know, he, for the way that he rotated the spinners, because I thought he found out early on that uh, the fast bowlers were not effective on this pitch. And generally, from uh, the first game, where batting was so difficult, here it appeared as if the Pakistanis were cruising and uh, the fast bowlers didn't have enough bite. So to me, I think it's, uh, it's a question that the team management needs to ask itself. You know, if there are more 145, 150 kind of bowlers, that X factor bowlers, because today we didn't see that in the fast bowling department. And I don't think Temba had that confidence in them either, because none of them even completed their quota. Seven, six, five, four. You know, that's uh, none of them were even close to getting to turnovers, whereas spinners bowled 28 overs, which on a centurion wicket in the high world is almost unheard of. Uh, so I thought that was good captaincy, but also an indication of the fact that when KG, Anna and, and Lungi leave, it really does leave a big hole in the team. Uh, from a batting point of view, uh, I, I felt like the chase was disjointed. Um, you know, when, when you're chasing 321 and you have just one batsman striking at over 100, uh, not to mention that you then play 143 dot balls through the course of the innings. That makes it very hard for the team to really chase down 321 successfully. And that to me was the problem where it's an all or nothing approach where you're either defending or you're trying to find that release bound to your sixer. And that's not always going to work um, against quality opposition. And I think that's where uh, the team went wrong. Uh, you know, so I, somewhere I feel like the team needs to find a way to get its risk work better, you know, and find ways to, you know, run those hard twos and threes regularly. Because ultimately, the team is going to win if they play more low risk and high reward cricket. And I think through the course of this series, you know, I've, I've said it multiple times, when the first game, they're 160 top goals, in the second, 134, and today, 143. That's not going to win you games. You know, and um, teams that, and I actually, actually looked this up in more successful chases as well. You know, where teams like India and England have, have chased down 300 plus totals and they haven't really gone beyond that 110 dot ball mark. So it does tell you that that does add pressure to the batting lineup. And um, I do think it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the points that you made there. And that's something that I agree with is the aggressive cricket also means that you're running aggressively between the wickets. And I think that is a part of the Trans, can uh, we stop game that calling we also it aggressive had, cricket? Let's not ask this. No, but like <laughs> let's oh, let's call a spade a spade. It's not aggressive cricket. It's 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 it, it, it's 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 a, a it's a I don't know, a remix of Russell Domingo's and, and, and Otis Gibson's 
style of playing cricket. There's nothing new to this. We're not attacking in the power plays. We're not attacking from ball one. We're not keeping up any momentum throughout the middle overs. The only thing we're hoping for is we have enough wickets towards the end. That's Russell Domingo. That's Otis Gibson. That's 2015 World Cup, 2019 World Cup. Nothing's changed. He's just packaging it in something new. And I think we need to stop saying this aggression because there was no, in these last three ODIs, there's no aggression. Let's be honest. There was zero aggression at all. And, and this is the whole point is that he's stuck on this aggression thing. He's telling us he's teaching batsmen uh, new new ways to to hit shots. Guess what it was? It's a ramp shot that he's teaching these guys what to play. He's not teaching them to sweep. He's not teaching them to look for. And that's the thing, I think, why Timber Bavuma is such an important guy on the side. Of the top four, he's the only guy who can nudge a nerd or singles at a run of ball. He has an option on the leg side at mid wicket. He has an option uh, on the offside behind square or even in front of square if he needs to find wickets. He can drop the ball, they can run. And that's why this hamstring injury so, is so is so crucial to the side because now it kind of hamstring everything. Like nobody else has the... I don't think he's ever spoken to them about looking for singles. And and Aditya's point is an incredible point. It's a, it's a point that should come up in video analysis to say, guys, let's try keep the dot balls to minimum. I saw earlier today the relationship between Yanaman and Markram needs to grow if they're going to continue. If not, he needs to but work know with they his won't, partner. Yeah. But they weren't looking for singles. They were looking for boundaries at the top. That exactly. makes no sense to me. I understand exactly. it's a power play. I understand you need to get to get, to get get boundaries, but you still need to rotate the strike. It, it bothered me a lot that we were leaving runs on the table. And that's what it is. It's 30 runs left on the table. If our if if we add those thirty the, those thirty dots, we're close. We're there and thereabouts. And and to a certain extent, yes, you could say the game was lost in that in the in the first innings with those last two overs. But Timber had literally zero options at that point in time. The seamers looked off color. It was just like they didn't know what to do. Nobody could buy a Yorker. Nobody could buy a wicket. The only guys who could, and that's why we we bowled twenty eight overs a spin. But like fundamentally, the way in which South Africa approach and innings is 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 confusing because the guys at the top, the two of them, want to attack. They play beautiful shots, but they never look for they never look for runs. They never look to rotate the strike. It's similar to the way and it's similar to the way Aiden plays in in Test cricket. He just looks for 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 boundaries and he, um, early on in the innings, he doesn't look to rotate the strike. The only person who does look to rotate the strike is Dean Alga, and I think that's the type of mentality that needs to change. I don't know, and and that's one other question. That's one other point I'm saying. The possibly if there may be this may be the option because obviously we started the series saying there's a couple of questions at the top of the order at six, six, seven, and possibly um, at the back end. Though those questions are still those questions for me are answered. Um, even in this game, Yanaman needs to start. He needs to start over Aiden. I'm sorry, guys. I know you yeah. guys love him. I'm, I'm done with Aiden. Like I've been done since the 2019 World Cup in 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 white ball cricket. I told you guys he was a domestic bully, which he is. He's, he's great against lower quality bow, uh, bowling attacks, but at this level, we need something else. He needs to preserve his wicket a little bit more. Yes, he's getting like even today. Like what was that wicket? Like I sat there going, but like, dude, if you look at the, if you look back at that, what what would you be happy to go out to a ball like that? Um, so I feel as though we need to give Yanaman, because Aiden's gotten enough opportunities. Yanaman needs to get at least five, five to six games in the side as the primary opener to Quinton as his partner. Um, and then and then the other thing is at six and seven, I think Calvarena and, and and this whole bowling experiment that happened today should never happen again. It's great. It's beautiful that Aiden Markram's bowling. Play another team in world cricket. Aiden Markram's go, is going for nine and over. Those balls were not that great. Um, they didn't turn. All he was doing was just plugging in a hole. Um, and 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 yes, he got wickets and we're happy about that. But those were out of mistakes, not necessarily out of good bowling. The person who bowled well today was Kesha. He bowled out yeah, of his skin. And 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 and, and for me. That's the other question that we have. So if if so, so the question that we need the question the so first question is answered at the top. Yanaman in Calvarena needs an opportunity at six. He needs to bat. But the problem is you've got David Millen, you've got Hannah Klassen. Um, Hannah Klassen has one had has had one great series, and then everything else has been okay. Um, so I'm not too sure. Maybe drop him, bring him in, uh, bring 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 um, bring uh, 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 Calvarena into the side. Um, because Timber doesn't have 
um, a bowling option in, in the top six. He's And we need a longer batting lineup, guys. We saw that today. Um, Petlua is not a number seven. Um, so Yeah, he's an eight for me. Yeah, so we need to find a way to get... But that's what also... I was so surprised that they picked um, John John Smith over Mulder because um and and for Shaw Lang, I to say that it's difficult to fit him into the no. team was surprising to me. So, so the reason why they picked John John Smith is because uh, Rassi got injured. Um, no, I get that. But John John wasn't supposed to play today. He the, was. I, I know that, but I'm saying even even if Rassi is mm. injured, it doesn't make. I, I still don't think that. Putting Vianet lower down and this moving everybody up is fine. We still have the guys that can bat. That Kemba uh, wouldn't have changed. He would have stayed in his position. You just would have moved um, class and one up. We bat, bats domestically anyway. And also mm -hmm. you can have you can have Verena at five because Verena can do that job. That's where I think Verena should bat anyway. I think I think someone like David Miller is someone that can bat at six, and you can rotate it accordingly. You can have five or six. You can let them come in according to the, how the game situation is. If they lost a lot of wickets, for example, if they lost a lot of wickets and they need someone just to get that ball ticking over and to bring in Calvarena because he's good at finding the singles, yes. finding the gaps, so, running hard. Then if, you, if you're if coming towards the end, like this situation right now at the end here, instead of, if it was, instead of Pechlequire coming in at that point in time, having a David Miller coming in at that point of time is a whole different ball game altogether. Or, you know, like for me, if, if, if you can bring David Miller in when you're 10 overs left, I think that would be the smart option to bring him then in at five and then Kyle can come in at six. But those type of situations you can do according to how the game play and goes. But and he has a, he Kyle's has a, batting ability is so, it's so adaptable that you can bring him in where you, where you need him. Even if, even if you lose a Temba early, for example, if you lose two wickets early and you're seeing, whoa, we just need someone to just come in here and just take up, soak up the pressure, you can bring Calvarena in at that point because he's good at doing that. That's great but to I, have him in the starting look, 11. No, look, I'm sold on him. And he's one of the questions that we, we needed to answer at the, uh, at the beginning of the season. And sadly, he only got one game. Yeah. You know, like I felt, remember we were discussing that Yanaman should actually, Yanaman and, and Aiden yeah. needed to swap. Um, to try and get two games each so we could have a nice look at them. But I, I honestly think Yanaman's in such a purple patch in international cricket. He looks like he, he is playing the same way we want Aiden to play in yes. ODI cricket. He yes. is doing exactly what we're asking of. Because because we're sitting on potential, we're sitting on potential, we're sitting on potential. The man's been in the setup for five years. Mm -hmm. When's the potential going to come? But, um, a, but, but Yanaman's giving you that. Um, it Cal gives you that. So the question then is, what do we then do going back down the order? So the one other question is, okay, fine. Andile is a great death bowler. You keep him in, but then you might have to split the three quicks. You might have to find a way to split the three quicks in order to get a bowling all rounder in, be it a, a spinning all rounder in Keshav uh, or, or or Vian Mulder or Dwayne Petoris, and understand that that's the way it's going. Because if you look at the way England do, they split their three quicks. They don't go into um, an ODI with three out-and-out -out seamers. They'll go in with two. It's either Archer or Wood or somebody else. And then you've got Wokes, you've got Stokes, you've got all these other guys filling in between seven and eight. And obviously, Mo and Ali can bowl. So, so, to, so if you're going to try to use the England blueprint, even with India, I think and, and India is the best thing. It's, it's the two seamers um, or, or the one main seamer, and then they've got um, the one other out and out spinner who's the who's the bowler it might be Chahal or it might be Kuldeep. They might then they might fill in with other all rounders. And I think that's where the other conversation needs to come. We need to find a way to split the three and, and figure out if Tabere Shamsi is considered as part of the three and maybe have an allowance of three three out and out bowlers, be it spin or seam, and then you have two all rounders at seven and at, at seven and eight. And, and your seven all-rounder needs to be one who actually is a batting all-rounder. And then you might have somebody in the top six who can throw his arm around for a couple of overs. I think mm -hmm. that's probably how you need to split out the side. But from a, from a gameplay perspective and a batting perspective, I haven't, heard, I haven't learned anything better apart from the fact that some of the juniors are asking to be in the eleven. And it's a good problem to have because that means you have a large enough squad and you've got guys on the bench who are going to come in to add pressure to, for the guys at the top. I don't hate Aiden Markham, as some people in the comments are saying, but I do think Yanaman needs a, an extended run in the side um, when Quinton comes back. Right now, if we're going to Ireland and it, it has to be Aiden and Yanaman and they need to try to find a way 
to get it going and Aiden needs to find his groove back. But outside of that, I think I haven't learned anything else. But one last thing, Pakistan have played incredible cricket. I have not seen a Pakistan team play such um, great execution um, So f- across all three elements. They bowled well um, in parts. I think the bowling is the, is the one part you could question. They bowled well in parts, not so well in others. They fielded incredibly well across the board, and their yeah. batting is is now back to those 27, um, that 27 uh, Champions Trophy winning level where – you have a top four or five that can actually get you 300 runs consistently. And Barbara Azam said at the beginning of the tour, and he proved it again. Yeah, uh, I think that's excellent points made. Like, if you're going to look at that, to split that 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 Siemens, uh, for me, um, it has to be Lungi out of the three for me, because I think that you can't have a guy bowling... 130s that doesn't offer something with a bat. Uh, I think if he was bowling one, if he was bowling 130 odd, I know he's in ODI cricket. In T20 cricket, I see it because of his variations, man. Yeah, so many the slower slower bowlers actually fare better in T20 cricket, um, particularly um, with the slower deliveries and the change up and the, and the variations. Um, so talking about that, I think Lungi is the one that has to fall there, and we but we need to play two two extra um, all rounders, whether it be one spinner and one bat, one seam all rounder. Or, or two spinner all rounders and, and just drop one of the strike spinners. I don't know, maybe in ODI cricket I'm talking about. There's various options to talk about when it comes to that. Um, we've got another guest here waiting for us, and then I'm, I'm gonna get, I just want to introduce him. And then, Aditya, I want you to go again with a, with a couple of um, final points. How's it, Karen? Welcome to the show. Uh, yes, hello, everyone. You- do you just want to give your your quick overview? I mean, obviously, maybe I don't know. You as a neutral, you're probably in, very impressed with the way Pakistan played. Oh, absolutely, definitely, and in particular, Babar Azam and Fakal Zaman again. First time in international cricket that Fakal Zaman has got back to back centuries, both against South Africa. So he was absolutely phenomenal today. Of course, it was a different kind of century, but it was one that Pakistan needed to build an innings. And then, of course, at the end, that brilliant partnership, 62, I think it was, or 63, between Hassan Ali and Babar Azam really got the job done. So from a Pakistan perspective, absolutely brilliant. Also thought Harris Ralph and Shaheen Shah Freedy in particular, excellent. Mohamed Nawaz with the left arm off spin as well, really kept things tight during the middle overs. So from a Pakistan perspective, very, very impressive. I have to say they got the job done. It's as simple as that. And then in terms of the Proteas, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? It really was. I mean, Harlid, your boy, Carver Rayner, who's an absolute gun, I think has really put himself almost on this platform now to deserve more Proteas performances. He's a fantastic young player. Same with Yanam and Milan. And these guys, although the result wasn't maybe what Proteas fans would have wanted, they have really set the foundation, I think, to go on and get more international appearances. So from that perspective, very, very promising. The only thing that I would say again, and this is cropping up now again, time and time and time again, is an issue at the death. And it's not taking wickets. Because for all of that brilliance that we saw with Hassan Ali and Babar Azam, other teams, let's say in England or in India, for example, or Australia, maybe could have cleaned up the tail. Maybe they wouldn't have allowed Hassan Ali to get all those runs. So I think, again, if you are to take one negative away, it is yet again not being able to clean up the tail. And I don't think South Africa at the moment actually have a solution to that, aside from Rabada and Nokia. Interesting. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you, Aditya, to add to that. Because um, when it comes to our dead bowlers, we're going to see now, in the, obviously, in the IPL that starts on Friday, I think it is. And uh, mm-hmm. we've got the likes of KG and we've got the likes of Nokia who've shown signs of that in the IPL, death bowling capabilities, Yorker deliveries. Mm-hmm. We want to see them do that more often in um, in protest colours. But uh, Ditya, from your point of view, how do we solve that issue? Especially, especially because we sorry, especially because we have a coach that is that is being talked about as one of the best death bowlers in his time and one of the best Yorker bowlers in his time. It's the question. The question I asked on Twitter was, who are who are the who is the next generation? Who is in the next generation of X Factor fast bowlers for South Africa? You know, who can bowl in that 145, 150 range? Now, Sisanda Magala is, is, is renowned for his death bowling. And uh, Bajra said that he hasn't cleared his fitness test. Uh, oh, good lord. Not, 
not in not in not in exact words, but essentially he said that uh, we've got a fitness criteria for this team, and so we're waiting for fitness tests. Guys, can I run this fitness test for him? I'll do it for him. <laughs> like honestly, guys, you know how hard that thing is. It's a two-kilometer time trial, and he needs to do it under eight minutes. He's never going to get it. it, it it's ridiculous. It's unbelievably wrong. I'll run it for him, bloody. Honestly, guys, this is wrong. Well, Because you're leaving done. your best death bowler. And that's the sad part about it. They were showing stats on TV. Sisanda is the best momentum one-day cup bowler. He took mm-hmm. the most wickets this season, but he's sitting on the sidelines. Like, what yeah. rubbish is that? And you can't tell me he's not fit. The man's finished an entire season of cricket. He's probably played the most domestic games out of anybody in this country. And he's that's sitting on the sidelines. That's very he's ludicrous. But okay. uh, did you just continue? And, and, <laughs> before, before Paul goes to another rant. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think... And it, it's, strange. it's strange for me to say that South Africa needs to find a battery of fast bowlers. You know, this, this country has... has Produced quite a turnstile of of fast bowlers over the years, and so it's it is a bit shocking for me that you know we didn't that there weren't enough replacements. And if we saw today, as as Mpo said earlier, that you know the fast bowlers are off color. Uh, De Pavlo, uh, Biran Hendricks, Amla, they weren't really troubling the Pakistani batsmen on what was probably the most challenging like two hours of batting early on. And it's and they were cruising, so you know there has to be some sort of um, X factor bowling that uh, that South Africa needs to find because this combination is not working. Um, it's it's as simple as that. So yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there, were the, there was this conversation like Charles Lagerwald said yesterday that if you know we want to see if uh, when KG and, and Andre Karinja or you know being rested, can the others step up and the question is, and the answer is no, they can't, uh, because you're playing it th- again. You're playing, you're playing a team from the subcontinent on on pitches, or certainly in conditions that are likely to suit bowlers more than batters. And you know, if you allow Imam Al Haq and, and Fakhar Zaman to really play a chanceless 112, they didn't really give Prote- uh, the Proteas any half chances either. So you know, if you allow them to get away with a chanceless 112 run partnership early on during the toughest phase of batting in the game then uh, that's that's a pretty obvious problem we have to push guys on this stream especially in this particular channel for the t20s for magala definitely to start because i think that in the in he can also add something with the bat he hits a long ball he hits a ball really hard as well so if he's coming in at nine imagine that having two all-rounders seven eight and then having him coming in nine and then you have KG, or or even if he's coming in at eight, and you have an all rounder at seven, that's also not uh, another option. No, um, so no, but Khalid, the, the thing about this is that Sisanda is your first man next up. He is your next man. He's your next man up. He's your fourth best bowler in the country after those three that have gone into the IPL. Um, and then you go into the Sipamlas and everybody else. The problem about today was that everyone's looking for 145. They didn't pick guys who bowl 140, 145. Mm-hmm. The guys who are bowling 145 are not even there. Miguel can bowl it at 145. He's not there. And he's a left-arm seamer. You've got Gerald Kutsia. He's young. He's 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 20. Yes, he hasn't mm-hmm. played a lot of cricket, but he he's can crank having, it up. He's been the having a lot of is, injuries lately. Yeah. They, they're yes, concerned but, about that, um, especially that I think the... The guys are very concerned about he having a prolonged career because he's at this young age, having so many injuries mm. in such a short space of time is very troublesome. So he needs to strengthen up a field and play a little bit but, longer before he gets picked. But the thing is, like, the guys who went to Pakistan, right? Ogusa Kale went there. He can crank it up. He's bowled quite well, actually, over the past couple of weeks for the Titans. Where is he? Lizard um, Williams can bowl 140. Hmm. Exactly. He didn't get an Clinton opportunity. Steve, man. But the question is, if you look at the bowling coach and what he used to be, the bowling coach is more looking for variety of balls and skill sets yeah. compared to just somebody necessarily mm. troubling the batsman. Because guys were bowling, like, honestly, guys, it was, it was laughable. Dupar Villon's bowling, uh, uh, bowling supposedly short balls that are coming up to uh, to the midriff of, of, of Fakhar Zaman. What are we supposed to do with that? 
Um, but and I think maybe that's the that's the thing that we're trying to give guys who been playing in the setup for a past couple of years an opportunity like even junior dollar can crank it up to 140 and he's like he's 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 come out of out of some injuries but it's it's just the question of okay guys we understand you picked the three that's what it was I'm sh- let's not do this experiment again but they probably will when we go to ireland it's just it's just it's just a baffling to me how they were just impotent it was just bad they were like <laughs> We expected at least someone to be like a lion. They all were no, just was, uh, I really thought. I really thought that, in all honesty, I'm, 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 Bjorn Hendrix. I consider someone that um that I've that I get along with well. You know, we have good chats, etc. But I'm, mm-hmm. I wasn't very upset. I was very upset with the way that he that he doesn't take his opportunities in situations like these, man. When when you are the senior guy on the side and you need to to lead the attack, we want to see you do that. I wanted to see him. Do those 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 Yorker deliveries that he's been working on, those variations. I wanted to see it come off. I mean, we didn't get to see that any yeah, but, I want him Holly, if you don't mind me just interjecting though, this is the problem. With Hendrix and De Pavlon, it's all well and good us, you know, criticizing and coming on here and saying stuff. They don't play consistent cricket. And for all of the good that they do in domestic cricket, where they are executing these Yorkers, they are becoming prolific wicket taking options. It's completely different to international cricket. And we mentioned it literally on last night's show about not expecting them to come in and do that right. Yeah, but I off. mean, okay, so so I understand that. Now, getting on their back because of performances, of, of, of getting the performances regularly, I can understand that. But to bowl a Yorker, it's a Yorker. Whether it is in domestic cricket, whether it is in T, um, T20 cricket, whether it's 10 over T10 cricket or 6 over side, it's still a Yorker. It doesn't matter what it is, it's still a Yorker. <laughs> So I just want to see them do it more often. I think being picked up, yes, normally, like, for example, I'll give you an example, John John Smuts. Okay, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to go, I'm not going after John John Smuts here, but it, he was bowling domestic cricket spinning lengths where the spinners in South Africa struggle. Those short, and you know, the, when the spinners bowl those short deliveries that almost bounce up midriff. I, I don't <laughs> like it when they do that. <laughs> so like you bowl it, the bowling, like almost domestic cricket legs in an international game, yes, that's when I'm talking about you need to change your game up. When I'm saying with regards to the slower deliveries and all of those things, it's about execution at the end of the day. And I didn't see them use the plans correctly. I think that Pavuma's captaincy... Plan B? You see, that's the problem. Now, when you're given a captain uh, opportunity to, to run a whole team of cricketers that they basically don't really know, like, for example... Um, Temba hasn't really worked much with a guy like um, Keshav as a captain, I'm talking about now. So mm. he maybe knows Bjorn Hendricks well because he played with him at the Lions. He doesn't really know what the Pavilion brings other than playing against the Pavilion in a couple of games. So to get to know them in such a short place of time and then know when to bring them on and who to trust and who not to trust, it's, it's difficult. But Temba did it well. I think that the way Temba did do it was relatively good com- considering in patches you could see Okay, there's a plan here, here's a plan there, and then then it goes off the wayside because Pakistan gets their eye in. This by this by that time you've got informed batsmen that have been playing well the whole series and consistently from the last series into the new series, okay, other than Fakir Zaman. But the the other guys coming in here playing with all this confidence, they're gonna see that. They're gonna pick it up. They're gonna first wait and see, okay, this bats bowl is bowling, I guess. Oh no, I can take him on. And then they'll go after him. And it's as simple but, as that. But Khalid. So, 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 so Jeff Turner on Twitter was talking about how short the guys were bowling. Yes. In the first early. On, and it was, yeah, but the problem I was having. We know. My problem is on this pitch in Centurion. At, so, Centurion, generally speaking, right, they're using, the, they're using now the history of South, the Centurion pitch. Knowing on Centurion pitches, you can, generally speaking, you can bowl short deliveries and pamper South, sub, subcontinent teams. When it's the weather is like we know it to be, when it's dry, when it's hot, and it's all no, like but, those type no, of but things. No, but we've been watching on Supersport the, the, exactly. the four-day series, and we watched two draws at Centurion. Yeah, on TV live. Yep. And 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 and, and guys are scoring bucket loads of runs. No one was taking wickets, and you're telling me that we're gonna go in there and try bounce them out. No, but that's what my that's what I'm saying. It's a wrong approach. Yes, we but then what was pitch. plan B? Why weren't they coached for a plan B? Why weren't they, they told to I go for a plan B? I have no clue. 
If I could answer what that question, that I'd be the coach of the Proteas. <laughs> no, because the, 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 the problem is that the, the, the fast bowlers bowled themselves out of the out of the attack. They gave away overs to John John Smuts and Aiden Markram. That is the most. Mm. That is probably and 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 it's most. It's part for me as a as a fast bowler. For those guys, say I'd be humiliated because like Andula ended up bowling four overs, and he's a senior player. That can never happen again. It can never no. happen again. He, and, and, and that's where my issue was was lying, was that Timber was great in, in identifying that these guys aren't coming, aren't, aren't doing what he's asking them to do or whatever the, the story was. And he went to, to, to guys and somehow, by God's grace, Aiden Markram can bowl 10 overs. Luckily, it's only one Muslim that we need. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> But, so, but that's the thing. So I, I, the, the question goes back to the preparation, and I'm not saying uh, Charles Langefeld is, uh, is, is, is not the right bowling coach for South Africa, but the question was, what was plan B? Like, honestly, what was plan B? Plan A went out the window from over five, and there was no plan B. And, and, and for me, that's where, even with, 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 with Aaron saying consistent cricket and all of these things, when, when, when Charles said he was happy with De Pavillon yesterday in the press conference, what was he happy with? Like I, I, I failed to see what he was happy with, but I just hope we don't continue this experiment trying to keep guys along. And this is where I think the difference between South Africa and the other teams in the world is that we'll keep guys along going around the world when we know guys aren't that great. We've seen quite a lot of guys just drop people. Let's move on. We've seen some some things. Maybe for the guys who are still in the T20s, they can give us an, an opportunity or, or something will give us a, a match-winning performance. But quite frankly, after today, there's some guys who I do not want to see in in, in, in colored coaches coaches for again I, I, or until they have a, a even a, even when they do have a blind of a domestic they must be taking wickets at an average of seventeen for them for me to consider them to come back into the side. And who are they? Out of interest. <laughs> So, because I, okay. I think I think we all know who okay. one of them is. Look, look, look! I've seen enough of Bjorn Hendricks. Hendricks. I've seen enough of Bjorn Hendricks. I've seen enough of of Du Pavillon. Um, I think yes, they're great, but I don't think they fit. They 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 work well bowling with one of the three who have left. But alone, isolated, I don't think it's that great. I, I think if Junior Dollar is not going to be played, he shouldn't tour. He's if you're going to pick him, he must play. I mean, and we, knew that they knew, we knew they're going to take um, net bowlers with man. Yes. So we, Sipam, we yeah. Sipamla needs more time in the side and he needs to grow into his role. I think everyone is expecting him to bowl the 140s and, 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 and up there. He's not getting there, so he needs work with the bowling team to get it right. Um, he still is very important. I was just disappointed with him today. I don't know what was going on with the short ball barrage. Um, AIDS will travel with the, the Protea side as a reserve batsman. That's one thing I can tell you, but I don't think he should be in the eleven right now. I do yeah. think Yanaman needs to get an opportunity. Um, John John, I feel as though you're going to keep him around, but I think he needs. To, we need to let him go. I think what what Calvarena today gives a, has 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 possibly pushed him out the side. Um, even though John John bats in the top order, and we love his bowling and we love him as a human, I think. We've seen enough. He, he he's the next level, and I think for me, only if there's an injury to the guys, either Verena, Rassi, or any you know, of those guys, he'll come in. And that's the way I use John John. But I don't think we should lean on him a lot in 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 squads in squads. But I think for me, those are the guys. Heino Klassen needs one more chance. Um, I think after that Australia series being 13 months ago um, and having a very long time. Um, away from international cricket, he might need to need to come through. But like guys, I think we've seen quite a lot. Uh, Keshav needs to be in the side in the eleven. I don't know. One hundred percent. He needs to. Like, but okay, so we got needs to find, a, find a way inside that eleven. Someone told us, I think, earlier on, guys. I can't read all your all, all of your comments. The comments are coming in so quickly, and I'm trying to focus on the guests on the channel as well. 
So if you want to get your comments read, then go to the super chat. That's the bottom right hand, left hand corner, sorry, of the of the live stream, and then you click that dollar sign, and you can oh bottom left. That's your the instructions on the bottom of the screen, and also smash that like button. I mean, if we don't have over hundred likes on this video, then I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Please, guys, come on, <laughs> smash that like button and get get to commenting as well after the video is gone live. Positives of this. Um, let's talk about some positives now because I know Aaron's a very positive guy. He doesn't like the, the negative stuff, and I'm I'm the same. I don't like negativity. I'm a more I like I'm also very positive. positive. I'm, I'm, I'm positive until the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we love him, Paul. Look, uh, uh, from a, from a positive perspective, I just really think that when we when we look at the team, we've been complaining about when the when the first eleven plays. We've been complaining about we have too many anchors in the team, maybe. Um, guys, there's too many dot balls. To rectify that instantly, I would put Calvarena in at five. So we've already decided that amongst us all year, we think that that may be a good idea. Because I feel that Klaas is not the type of guy that looks for those singles and then manipulates the ball like that. He's more of a, of a, of a shot player. You know what I mean, Klaas. Whereas I, uh, with Calvarena does these deft touches, moves around the corner, finds the gaps, makes the singles. And I think him and Rassi in the middle order, superb. I think four and five, Rassi and Calvarena would be an excellent partnership. Six, Sorry, David can Miller. Can I have one the, quick comment, please? Reverend? Yes, of course. Of course. You know, the, see, I might be, I'm, obviously I'm not a technical expert on the game, but I have a feeling that there is a, there's a problem in South African cricket with with like a wristiness you know it's it's not a tendency for south african mm. batsmen to use their wrists often because you, you look at in in the subcontinent yeah, where you where most cricket is played with a straight bat mm. you know like from a very young age the only way to manipulate a gap is by using your wrist and a straight bat and i don't think that that's the case in south africa because a lot of cricket is played cross batted you know how you know that with the way the South African commentators used to speak about Hashim Amla. They always used to yeah. they always used to highlight the fact, oh what a lovely wristy player, look how he manipulation of uses his wrists. You could see that. And and generally speaking, as kids, I know when I was a kid as well, you watch the Herschel Gibbses and you watch the those guys when you were growing up. You also want to eat the ball like at the pull shot and, and playing across the line. Um it tends to be one of those things that South African batsmen tend to love to do. I mean, then you look at a guy like Jacques Callas who could manipulate the ball around anyway. Um, you're you're hundred percent correct. So when you have a player like that, we should value him. Definitely. And if even most recently, I think Faf Duplessis is a master of that. Yeah. It's such an integral part of his game. You know, like it's not using his wrist. from the start of his career, he's been like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that that to me is 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 a concern because you know you you look at you look at some of the best cricketers in the world right now the best batsmen you know the top the fab four as we, as we like to call them you know Virat Kohli Steve Smith Ken Williamson Joe Root how many of these players are really serious power hitters none of them none of them are but all of them are brilliant at using their wrists all of them value that that low risk high reward strategy where you can score eight runs and over by running four twos, or you can hit a boundary off the ground and run three twos. And I've that to me, <laughs> yeah, and that to me is has been missing this series. And I've literally I felt like pulling my hair out in a lot of the games because <laughs> you know it's. And I'm I'm going to use an example here. Um, Aaron unfortunately may not like it as much, uh, but there was a game in early 2017 where. England made 356 in Pune in 50 yeah. overs. I do remember that. India yeah. were 60. India were 50 for four, uh, chasing 350. And Virat Kohli made 120, 122, and Kedar Jadav made 120. Hardik Pandya oh, came yes, in with, with 40. So they were like 50 for four, and they ended up chasing 356 in 48 mm -hmm. overs. In that game, for all the batsmen that scored above 10 runs, all, all of them scored at better to run a ball. And in that game, India only played 110 dot balls. So what does that tell you? You know, compared to 160 that South Africa has played or 140 that South Africa has played, 
and for that matter pakistan as well because in today's game pakistan uh, played 134 dot balls so pakistan was maybe a little bit better than south africa through the series at rotating strike but south africa hasn't been great at rotating strike the series at all and and that to me is a major concern because a strong team look pakistan has some middle overs bowling issues and they will give you that odd boundary ball or that odd you know or that odd six but stronger teams are not going to be able to do that you know they're not going to give you that that boundary ball and the only way to really counter that is by finding finding those gaps and running too hard hmm. see that's a very good point and uh, i agree point, with you on I, i love it man <laughs> And then, so, and then the thing about it is that is also playing with soft hands. South Africans don't play with soft hands. It 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 it's 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 a problem. And don't, and and funny enough, Calvarena actually played well because because it's it's the the ability to for for you to just be able to guide the ball around is 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 something that's missed. Timber does it quite well, but that's obviously mm. because of the nature of Timber's game and and his height and everything else. Um, so there's no big booming cover drives, but it's moving things around, manipulating the field. Carl Verena was doing that quite well towards the middle of his innings when he was trying to get himself uh, closer to 50 and trying to push it with 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 Pichuai with the deft touches and stuff like that. And that's what you need to build into the next group of guys coming up because right now it's just about big booming cover drives, but that doesn't win your World Cup in the subcontinent at all. Um, and 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 that's something that we we need to figure out. Going mm-hmm. forward, because it's 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 getting out of hand. Because guys look great, but then guys don't push the cause of the team forward because they keep on looking for that boundary ball rather than necessarily just trying to build and be an accumulator. Because the Fab Five, and I'm adding Barbara Zam because he needs to be there. Mm-hmm. They accumulate. They they they. It, you need to be hungry for runs. You need to be hungry for ones and twos. You can't just be a a stickler for fours and sixes. You just need to you need to have that hunger to say where can I score next um off the next ball and you need to be able to have and let your partner know where your areas are so when the ball goes there it's a little bit more telepathic rather than just sitting there hitting it straight to the fielder and your your non striker is not calling you in to just at least try and, and steal a single which is what uh, Fakhar Zaman was doing today even uh, uh, at the wonders was that he kept on calling people through for singles he kept on taking those risky singles but he needed to because that's what is required my point again that i've made so many times for the, over the last year and a half that we've had this channel What I what I've been saying from the beginning is South African players and South Af- the South African team, the South African talent in this country, we are producing players that can play their na- if they play their natural game, they'll be successful. We need to stop trying to mold these people into into and pushing a philosophy on them that doesn't suit their game. If every single every single player bats they, plays their natural game, I think in that top six. South Africa will be in a lot more stronger positions in cricket. And Khalid, stop picking players. Six, Khalid, in that top six, what is that natural game? Go through the top six. Okay, so if you look at one's so, natural game. So if you look at a guy like Quentin the Cock, I've noticed that when Quentin has a type of guy on the other end that has a calm head, obviously he performs better. Whenever he's in those situations, look at look at when he plays for Mumbai, throw it, his head. Mental space, the way he is, calm at the crease, doesn't panic in situations. Can rotate the strike, can take the pressure off him if he's struggling. Kerwin is the type of guy that sometimes he just needs to get on the other end quickly just to get the nerves away. And another guy needs to just be on the other side and just calm it down. Then there's days where he just comes out first ball, bam, six, seven, seven runs, eight runs, nine runs, ten runs. I'm just talking crap. But I mean, generally speaking, he will just smack the ball all around the, all around the ground quickly. So there's 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 different types of things like that that you have to look at. Then you look at the guy like Timba, who has been coined as this this guy that is an anchor. But the reason we call him that, or the reason I call him that, is because of the way he rotates the strike and the way he finds the gaps and makes take singles. Generally speaking, when he has a guy that can do that with him, he does that really well. So if him Quentin runs decently between the wickets, he doesn't necessarily need to um, he he doesn't necessarily need to wait, wait on one in and smack. Um, compared to Yanaman Malan is a good runner between the wickets. I've seen him do it to the Cobras on numerous occasions. He's a good runner. We saw it today in this game. He did it very well. Um, Aditya was talking about it. Then you've got Rassi that needs a couple of balls to get his eye in. 
He also tends to look to do that. He also generally tends to look to hit singles and then get off strike, watch on the other end, and then rotate and then get a, some extra some balls, some dot balls. It's, you should allow your number four to be able to get his eye in a little bit. You know, it's allowed for a guy that's going to bat, who, who bats really fast. Rassi, for me, it's okay. Because at the end of his innings, generally speaking, when his eye is in, he, he tends to make it up. That that strike rate starts to increase heavily when his eye is in towards the end of his innings. He might start off slowly, but if he has a guy that is rotating at the other end, he'll be fine. He gets you'll get his eye in a lot quicker. Then you look at number four. Now I think number five, sorry. Now we have a little issue because it was always five to proceed. Now we have a little issue because we I think I still feel that the number five, six position, either give it to David Miller and say, so, okay, look here, we're giving you that number five position. Then we have a number six position. How do we want to play this? Are we going to go for this guy that is just going to come in and whack? I don't think in India that's maybe a good idea. I think that maybe having a guy that's a little bit more controlled and that can, that can take pressure situations, at the, you know, look at the, take a pressure situation, move the ball around, it can play spin very well, is more important to us than the guy that can just whack the ball out the park. Give our all-rounders the opportunity to maybe do that. Um, if we can find them. That was the issue, of course. That's why I say someone like Magala is so important is because Magala will come and hit the long ball. He can do that smashing role for you in the side and be an incredible death bowler. So those are two, two roles that you have to look at. In India, generally speaking, you need adaptable players because sometimes you don't know what conditions they're going to keep put in front of you. You don't, you don't know how that pitch is going to behave. You don't know what the conditions are going to be like. You imagine you only have a guy that can hit a long ball and then he comes here and then he has to hit elegant um, the reverse sweeps and do all of those things and he can't do that. Then he's, how's he going to adopt this game? You've, you've picked a dud. You don't want to pick a dud. You want to pick a guy that can think. That's why I say guys with the right mentality should take preference over guys with just pure talent. That's my personal opinion on that. Let's just round this up, guys. Um, let's go with um, Cricket Connoisseur first. Let's go with... Um, Aditya, and then let's go with them Paul. Last. Well, how would you like me to round it up, Harlid, in terms of the ODIs? Yeah, just just your gen yes, just generally. We will do a whole preview show about the T twenties. T twenties. All right. Yep. Fine. I uh, mean, from a neutral perspective, of course, a little bit disappointed South Africa didn't go on and win. But yeah, it was an excellent series. I must admit, I enjoyed it from from a neutral perspective. Pakistan's batting. We saw that absolute masterclass. From Fakal Zaman, didn't we, in Johannesburg, of course, today as well. Saw some brilliant knocks between him and Babar Azam. And then I think at times, South Africa as well did show quite a bit of promise. I have to admit, in particular in the first ODI, I thought they played very, very well. But it's just about consistency. And I think that is something which, again, does need to be worked upon. Winning is a habit. I know it's very, very cliche, but it is something that the Proteas do need to learn along the line. And who knows, they could do before 2023. But in terms of the series itself, I found it very, very entertaining. I'm going to miss it slightly, seeing the likes of Babar Azam and Fakar Zaman building in innings. Imam al Haq as well. thought he was absolutely fantastic. With that being said, we've got a very, very exciting T20 series coming up between two exciting teams. And to be honest, I can't wait for it. It's going to be an absolutely brilliant series. And yeah, fingers crossed, we're in store for some more good cricket along the way. I did, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot like what Aaron said, you know, this was an incredible series to watch. And um, although a bunch of us Proteus supporters were probably left disappointed towards the end of it, um, it was it was great exposure for what was you know, a relatively inexperienced team. And um, this experience can can really hold them in good stead in the future if if they if they learn their lessons. Um, I think among other things that we've we've discussed today, um, the Aiden Markham question is a million dollar one. And right now, to me, he reminds me a lot of what Rohit Sharma was in the initial period of his career, where he he'd make these drop dead coaches thirties and then leave us pulling our hair out because we're, we're wondering why he didn't go on to make fifty or a hundred and. That to me is where Aiden Markram is right now. Um, do we doubt Aiden's potential? Absolutely not. You know, he can be a world beater. Um, and I'm sure he will be. But my hope for him right now, and uh, I said this on Twitter as well earlier today, that he should take a leaf out of Rohit Sharma's book. 
I think that to me is his game, you know, where he takes a little bit of time and once he's totally set, he combines his attacking instincts with smart running. And that to me is what um, Aiden Mockham's future one day games and T20 games should look like. Um, but in saying that, I think um, overall great exposure for the Proteas. Um, I was very happy to see Pakistan do well as well. And um, I think part of Misbah's personality is really rubbing off on this team, you know, where they, you know, where they put in clinical performances. Otherwise, generally, uh, the famous saying in world cricket has always been that, you know, which Pakistan team is going to turn up today. Uh, but we've seen some consistency from them through this series. And uh, that, that can only be good for world cricket. So... Congratulations to Pakistani fans as well. And congratulations to Pakistan too, I think, uh, as, as the teacher said. I love that point of Mizbah's personality, but that's what who Mizbah was as captain. And I, he's one of my favorite Pakistan captains because the, he tried to instill discipline, especially when they were not playing at home um, and they're playing in the UAE. Um, yeah, look, I think for me, let me dwell on the positives. Yanaman Malan, Kal Varena, and Dile's 50 today was a positive. I hope it moves into his burning because he is off form. When they selected him in the side, we knew he was off form. He needs, he's got these three T20s to kind of rein it back in and bring it back in. Um, but that 50 today kind of gave us, it's not a, a panacea, it's not a, 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 a quick fix, but it was something to build his confidence. He's been injured and he was coming back from, from an injury. And so that was something that we needed to see. Um, and the other thing is that obviously, yes, I hope I hope Aiden Markram shows us, as Bevan says, he will show us. I hope yeah. he does. But for now, what do we do when you've got a guy like Yanam and Milan staring down, knocking down the door? You can't leave him out. You really can't. Yeah, and can't. that's what I loved about the series. There are guys on the fringes of the side who put their hands up. Kesha, um, Yanaman, and 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 Kyle. And, and Anuk Nokia was on the fringes of the side. He got in to that 11 and obviously you'd be a fool. Um, uh, you'd be a fool not to leave him out. And Anuk Nokia put his hand up. He, he put his hand up incredibly. Um, and, and, and he's now, um, he's now someone we will, we, we, we would, you would struggle to drop. So those are the things that you can take. Uh, Timber's captaincy over the, over the past three ODIs has been great. Um, I think he's 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 had to work with the guys he knows, with the guys he doesn't know, and you can see that it's it's growing and it's building, and the series wins will come for themselves. I think for me, if if the Proteas can try and take um, what happened on the pink day and try to replicate that and improve on that by reducing the dot balls from a batting perspective, that would be something that you would you'd want to package and take around the world. From a bowling perspective, a lot of work needs to be done for that group below the IPL guys who've left because there is a lot of work that needs to happen and it, it, we need to identify the right guys for the right roles because right now, yes, we've picked on we've picked on, on necessarily domestic form and, and some guys who are in and around the fringes, but the guys who were on form domestically never got a run out. And I think that's a disappointing thing. But overall, Pakistan were better than South Africa across all yeah. three form of course all three um disciplines in the game of cricket and by that they deserve to be winners um yeah. and I'm excited for the T20 because mm. the like yes we're so far away and we're so far away from world cricket but at least we can see how far we are and what we need to fix and I think that's more important and I hope they take this they go to Ireland and they go and put this into practice, all of these things into practice. Maybe they watch our show and then they can put all of these things into practice and, and give us a much more clinical performance across all three formats. It's not going to be easy because Ireland are world beaters too because they, they beat a certain world champion sometime uh, along the way. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's what it is. And, yeah, but good, good series. Though. Good <laughs> cricket. Thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show, Aditya, Aaron, and Paul. Thanks to all the fans. Smash that like button, please. Comment, subscribe, do all of those things. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we're going to be previewing, obviously, the T20s very, very soon. Um, I think maybe, guys, we can probably go straight into it. There's not much cricket to talk about, so maybe we can do a preview show tomorrow evening. Um, or oh, oh, actually, tomorrow is the Offside Maiden show. 
yeah. outside Maiden show. So maybe we can do a, a we can do an awesome preview on Friday. So hope you guys to tune in for that. I forgot it's Wednesday. I'm looking at the time. I'm, when I when we click it's on, I don't even look at the days. I just say when's the first ODI? It's first ODI day. It's two second ODI day. It's third ODI day. I just look at dates. I don't look at days. So sorry. Also about known that. as heaven. Also known as heaven. This is what also heaven known. feels like. I think. <laughs> <laughs> of course so guys thanks for a lot for tuning in smash that like button like you like you know you should and we'll see you guys again tomorrow with the offside maiden show and then we'll be able to do a preview of the t20 on friday thanks a lot for tuning in see you guys very soon take care everyone